Hello students, I hope you all are keeping well and also you all are learning time to time. I welcome you to this second part of the video on the chapter force and pressure. In the previous lesson, we discussed about force. We understood that force is a push or pull. We also learnt how to represent force. We saw that force requires a magnitude as well as a direction to be represented. We also discussed about the various effects of a force on a body. Today, we shall discuss something more about forces. We had talked about contact and non-contact forces, if you remember in our previous video. Today, we learn about what are contact and non-contact forces. As we learnt in the previous video, the force can be broadly classified into two major types. They are contact and non-contact forces. You know that there cannot be a force between two objects until there is a physical interaction between them. Consider a person pushing a car. He or she cannot push a car unless his body is in contact with the car. You can't exert force on another person without being in contact with that person. Some of the interactions occur between bodies only when they are in physical contact with each other. Therefore, a force will come into play between them only when they are in physical contact with each other. Such forces are called as contact forces. Muscular force and frictional force are the examples of contact forces. Let us now discuss about muscular force. What is muscular force? Muscular force is the force applied using parts of our body like hands or legs. It is the force which is resulting due to the action of our muscles. We make use of the muscular force of animals for a number of purposes. In some places, Camels and horses are used to carry materials and people. Farmers make use of bullocks for transporting materials and people. The muscular force of elephants is used in forest areas to carry logs of wood. Can you make a list of activities where muscular force is used? After you make the list of activities, where muscular force is used, you will find that it is not possible to use muscular force without coming in contact. A physical contact is very essential to apply muscular force. Therefore, muscular force is called as a contact force. All our bodily activities like walking, jumping, bending, lifting, running etc are due to muscular force. Now we shall study about another contact force called as frictional force. What is frictional force? Place a book on a table, push it with your hand, the book moves and stops after a while. Why did the book stop moving? This is due to the friction that oppose the motion of the book on the table. Please note that the book is in physical contact with the surface of the table. Consider a box being pulled on the floor. Why is it difficult to pull it? What is the force that opposes the motion of the box on the floor? This is also due to the frictional force. When does force of friction come into play? Friction will come into play when one surface is in contact with another surface and one surface tries to move over the other surface. 
frictional force will always oppose the motion of one surface over the other. Friction is a force that opposes the motion of an object by being in contact with it. Therefore, frictional force is called as a contact force. You will study about frictional force in detail in the next chapter. However, we shall recall what we studied about friction in this chapter. We have discussed and learned that friction is a force that opposes the motion of one surface over the another which is in contact with it. Frictional force is a contact force. It comes into play when two surfaces that are in contact with each other move over or tend to move against each other and friction is a contact force. Now, we shall briefly discuss about the non-contact forces. What is a non-contact force? As the term non-contact suggests, it means that the force comes into play even when the two objects are not in physical contact with each other. That means, this is something like action at a distance. Magnetic force and gravitation force are two common examples of non-contact force. Let us study about magnetic forces. Let us do an activity with magnets. It is also your common experience that when you bring a magnet just closer to a piece of iron or iron nails, the iron nail gets pulled towards the magnet even when it is not in contact with it. This activity with the bar magnets will clearly show us that how the magnetic force is acting even when the bodies are not in contact with each other. So, what are our summarizations from this activity? We saw that magnetic force comes into play between two magnetic poles. Magnetic force is a non-contact force. It is a force that acts at a distance. It is either a force of attraction or a force of repulsion. Another non-contact force is electrostatic force. Let us observe this activity with bits of paper and a comb. I know you must have done this activity many times. Taking a plastic comb and rub it on woolen cloth or through the hair and bring it near the bits of paper. Let us see what happens. We see that the bits of paper are attracted by the comb even without touching. We can have more activities like rubbing the plastic straws and seeing the repulsion between them. In all these cases, we will find that one object could be moved by the another. That means, a force could act on another body even when there was no physical contact between the two bodies. So, let us summarize our observations of these experiments of non-contact forces. We observed that electrostatic force comes into play between two electrically charged bodies. It is a non-contact force that is a force which could act from a distance and it is either a force of attraction or repulsion. Is not that interesting children? As I mentioned earlier, there is another non-contact force which is all around us which is the gravitational force. Let us study and learn something about the gravitational force. What is gravitational force? You know that moon is moving around the earth. This is caused by gravitation force. This force exists 
although the earth and the moon do not touch each other. Similarly, there is a force of attraction between the earth and any other object. A fruit falls down from a tree towards the earth due to the gravitational force exerted by the earth. So, what is gravitational force then? We can say every object attracts every other object by a certain force. This force arises due to their masses. This force of attraction is called as a gravitational force. We saw that gravitational force also acts from a distance. This means that gravitational force is also a non-contact force. The only difference between the gravitational force and the electrostatic and magnetic force is that gravitational force is always attractive, it is not repulsive. So, let us summarize what we learnt about gravitational forces. Gravitational force exists between any two masses. It is a non-contact force. It is always a force of attraction. Now children, you can differentiate between muscular force and gravitational force. You can also differentiate between gravitational force and magnetic force. You can also differentiate gravitational force with electrostatic force. Now, I have some assignments and activities for you to do. Please go through these assignments and activities carefully. Discuss with your friends, parents and elders and complete these activities. So now, it is time to summarize what we have learnt in this video. We learnt that forces can be broadly classified into two types as contact forces and non-contact forces. Contact forces require interacting objects to be in physical contact with each other. Muscular force and frictional force are examples of contact forces. Non-contact forces are forces which act from distance. They do not require physical contact with the interacting objects. Gravitational force Magnetic force and electrostatic force are the examples of non-contact forces. So children, this was the second video on the chapter force and pressure. I hope by now you must have started enjoying it and you have learnt quite a lot about forces. Please go through your books and revise these units which we have discussed. I shall be back with you in the next video with our discussion on pressure. Till then, take care of yourselves and keep learning. Thank you.